Story Bible gets all of the attention inside Pseudorite, but in my opinion, there's actually a better way to write. And that is using the write features over here, Auto Write and Guided Write. Now, if you've played with this before, you know, there used to be the issue of as you would use it, it didn't recognize your characters or the events that would happen in your story, things like that. It made it very awkward. Write only reads back a thousand words, up to a thousand words. But could really only see before whatever you were writing already inside the document and then whatever you would put down here in the key details. Well, as of about a month ago, they changed that. So now the write features also see your genre box, style, your characters, and the outline that is linked. So it'll look at whatever chapter you are working on. And I'll show you what we did yesterday, for instance. So this was my writing, and then we let AutoWrite pick it up. To do this, we started with chapter one, and I'll show you what that looked like. We just had chapter one here. As you're writing in this document, and of course you could just keep going inside the same document, no need to have different chapters over here in different docs. It's going to look at this information and it sees Jameson is one of the characters here, Detective Jameson. So it'll come to the character box and pull descriptions for Detective Jameson. Now, since no other characters are mentioned, it is not going to pull any other characters. You don't have to worry about all of these coming in. Now, if you do want them to come in, you have a couple of options. First of all, I could just mention it here. You know, when he gets the phone call from Samantha or however I want to introduce her, it would read back and see, now Samantha is in here. Then as it's writing, it now has Detective Jameson and Samantha in the document to work with, and it'll pull those in. Well, let's say I'm not having her entered into this document soon enough. I could have a beat here mentioning her, or it jump back to the outline. I can just have a cast list, and you could do it whatever. Cast list, you could just call it characters present, characters in scene, or just characters. She is actually not in the scene, but this is just for reference. But if I wanted both of these to be in here, well, there you go. Now, whenever I go back and work in that document, again, it's pulling from my chapter summary, so it sees both of those characters are in here. So it's going to pull her in somehow. Let me go back and change that. That's how you can control it. Either mention them in the plot point that you have inside your chapter summary, in the paragraph, however you format yours. Or you can do a list over here. Or again, if they're present within that chapter themselves. I'll show you what we did yesterday and we'll take it for a spin again. Yesterday we had chapter one linked, just like it is. Wrote this. And then we let auto write take over. Then I linked chapter two, so I stayed in the same document, came up here, updated it, linked to chapter two. Now, chapter two summary is him arriving at the crime scene. I'm going to scroll down, and this started chapter two. I picked it up very nicely. However, there was a gap. We needed to add a transition scene. So that's what this is. This mid part right here, transition scene. So what we did for that was I just put my cursor here. I came over to the key details box. And I told it what was going on and what we needed. So he's at his home, receives a call about the murder, finishes his coffee, showers, dresses, and headed out, heads out to the crime scene. It followed exactly what I said. Again, let's look at that one more time. He receives a phone call about the murder. He receives a phone call about the murder. I told him he finished his coffee, showered, dressed, headed out to the crime scene. Finishes his coffee, showers, dresses, and then he goes to the crime scene. So the only issue here at this point was that whenever I had linked chapter two previously, it of course had them going to the crime scene. So there's just this little error that I need to clean up. But I've always loved write. It's just a very relaxing way to work in my opinion. And now that it's connected to these boxes inside Pseudorite, I honestly think I will be working here a lot more than in Story Bible. So we'll do a quick little demonstration of it.
let me go down and see which one I want to work with. And then when I work on the next two fiction books of mine, I will be recording the process. I'm actually going to work on them inside Sudorite two different ways. One of them will be using the chapter generator box and doing the entire story inside one box. So y'all will see that workflow. The other one, the other book will be worked on using the right features over here. Y'all seen people work inside Story Bible a hundred times. Y'all see me do that in classes. So I'm going to show y'all those alternatives as well. I did notice after playing around with it. So you see here, we have a couple of points. Now this one isn't so bad because it's just more of an emotional thing. But keep in mind, if y'all have a couple of points, once auto write kicks in, it's going to try to cover all of them. So it may reference one, let's just say you've already covered it in your writing, it may quickly reference it. It's not in a bad way. Nothing that's really jarring and awful. Nothing like looping. But keep that in mind. If you have several plot points and things happening in your chapter summary, AutoWrite is going to try to reference them before it completes its task. That's its job. It said, hey, this is the chapter summary. This is what I want you to do. It took over and started doing that. So if you want to slow things down, keep it just a plot point at a time. Because one of my thoughts, one of my ideas was actually to fill all of my story beats inside one chapter. Well, I discovered after working yesterday and it finally clicked into place, that's not going to work really well. Everything is going to rush very fast. Now, if you want that quick first draft, that may be the way to go. Play around with it. So let's check out a good chapter here. So chapter seven, suspect apartment, describes it, says what they're doing. Now I could actually get rid of this one, hold off and use that in guided write whenever I'm ready for that plot point. So again, as soon as I hit auto write, it's going to take that into account. But let me show you all this. So I'm going to get rid of the box and you see it's still linked up here. So that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and do right. So I'm not even going to type anything yet. Let's see what it does for us. So this is good if you don't uh, have a way to start the scene. You don't have any idea how you want to start it. You no longer need to have the minimum of 20 words. Now you can just click on a write and it's going to write. Again, taking that chapter summary into account along with your genre, style, and the characters that are mentioned. So I could put that in there if I wanted to. Or let's just start writing. So they're going into the suspect's apartment. I cannot get that word. Okay, we'll figure that out later. There we go. That doesn't look right either. I'm just going to start it like that and then let it continue. I need to get rid of my key details. So key details is something to keep in mind for, I like to use them now for transition scenes. So keep this in mind. If you have stuff in here, it needs to make sure you don't contradict anything or rush something. So obviously don't need that anymore. I am going to, you know what, let's do 500 words. And I'm a fan of best prose, so we'll go through that. And my cursor here, and I'm just going to click for it to write. Not doing too bad. Now keep in mind too, this is just basic writing right here, getting the scene ideas down. But it does read back and take your style here in the document into account. So if I'm using the vulgar words, dirty words, crude dialogue, that's going to take into account and use those as well. If I'm making it really dark and ominous, it's going to keep that tone. I do not believe this is 500 words. Let's check. 327 words. But then again, it doesn't have much to work with because I like to keep my chapter summaries simple. I'd rather it stop early than give me boring stuff or start looping, anything like that. Let's pretend I edited all that. Everything's good. So I would edit it. And then when I'm ready to move on, I would just update this. So now it's looking at chapter eight, police station, conference room. I could keep that in there. Let's see how it ended. You see here, the suspect still needs to talk. I would actually click right one more time. Like that peeling paint on the walls, no spots on the ceiling. 
And just remember, too, to keep your character boxes updated with the descriptions. Because as I said, when it mentions the character in the chapter summary or in your document, it's going to jump over to that character box and pull their descriptions. Okay, so it ends with, it was time to get back to work. I like that. So now that connects to my next chapter summary. With them being back at the police station. Let's do it one more time. Actually, I can use guided right now to guide it to, for them to go to the police station. So it's time to get back to work. They know that he's a dead end. So now I can go to guided right or key details. You have those options. So I can put whatever beat I want here in guided right, or I can go to key details. Let's do it both ways. Copy that. So them going back to the precinct is in the key details right here. Let's see what it does. And now, um, don't like this. It does start going to the police station here. So I want to see if using guided right brings them to the police station sooner. I like this. I was looking at the previous. Okay, I like this a lot better. Guided right did better for the transition here at key details. And key details seems to do better whenever you have two scenes, the previous and the subsequent, and you need a little filler which makes sense because in key details, I can tell it, this just happened, this is going on, they need to do this, something along those lines. All right, so that is working with the new right features. Not new features, but upgraded, I guess you would say. So again, they are now, the auto right and guided right are now taking into account your genre, your style so make sure you keep these in line as you're updating your chapters that you're working with takes into account genre style looks at your characters but the characters need to be mentioned either in that chapter that you're working on or you could have a cast list where you're mentioning them or they need to be mentioned in the document before it will go and grab those characters and their descriptions and things like that it did a very good job the other day let's see but his character description, you know, I mentioned he had a case that he couldn't solve before when a child died. So it did a good job of bringing that in. But it didn't get all, I don't want to say cliche or on the nose, maybe, like story Bible prose tends to do. You know, if I tell it some models, if I say they have a certain Myers-Briggs type, Enneagram type, it'll just throw that in there. Or if I say... Other descriptions, the most accurate is likely to bring that in verbatim. So this, using the auto write, did a very good job of bringing this in nicely without being too on the nose and everything. So play around with the new write features. I think you'll like them, especially if you're the type that likes to have more control over everything. For instance, in one of the stories I will do, again, recording that. I will actually just go in and fill all of my boxes here for my characters, my outline, genre, and style, of course. I could put some extra info in Brain Dump since I know it's not going to read that while working in Auto Write, and that way it will help me just quickly copy paste things as I need to change up the other boxes. But this is a good way to get into that flow of your writing until you hit that roadblock. Then once you hit that roadblock, you can click Auto Write, Guided Write, whatever you need to do to take things to that next step and get through that first draft a lot quicker. I hope this helps everyone. Thank you for watching. Bye.